Look at this. Is he going to come in? He's been looking so sad and lonely just sitting here like staring at me through the door. Literally staring at me. Look at this. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, and Boo. The Lucky Ferals. It's about 7.30 a.m. and we got snow overnight. Right now it looks like we might have gotten about five inches of snow. And it's supposed to snow all day um, and all night. We're supposed to get 18 to 22 inches, so almost two feet of snow. So I'm going to get dressed and go outside and clear off some of the snow before more comes down. It's 8.45 a.m. and it's starting to snow harder now, but I'm glad that I cleared off what I did. So this is what the feeder area looks like now. I have to put some water in the bowls because I cleaned out the bowls. We probably have um, probably like five inches of snow. There's Hydrox. Can you see him? He watched me the whole time. So I cleared out some paths for him. I have to be careful. I have to do it with a shovel, not the snowblower, because I don't want to run over any of the wires. This is a camera I had set up on the patio and I chopped the wire in half with the snowblower. So thankfully it's not the camera in Hydrox's shelter. Um, but this is the first casualty. And this is what happens to solar panels when it snows. They get covered in snow. I just put a plate of raw food out for a Hydrox. I tried to put it close to the back door so it does not get snowed on. It's starting to get snowed on a little bit. Hydrox is laying by the house about four feet away from here. I told him that there's food here so he needs to come and eat it. He's looking. Right now maybe he's smelling it. Okay, he's gonna jump up. He's gonna jump up. Can you see him? He's on the other, oh here he goes. Here he is. Eat your food and go back in your shelter. He's getting two scoops of the homemade raw food, which he ate so much of yesterday. I have not seen Ditto. I don't know where Ditto shelters, um, but hopefully Ditto is just hunkered down somewhere. I think the only reason Hydrax came out of the shelter is because I have um, the back door open like this and the cats are playing in the snow. And he probably heard the commotion. I've been trying to clean everything up right now. You know, the, the thing about working from home is that when you get a snow day, you don't really get a snow day. So in the past, if we had snow like this, I'd have a snow day and I'd be like, yay, I get to stay home today. And so I'd get to relax a little bit and, you know, deal with the snow. But when you're working from home, you don't get to do that. It's just like a regular work day. It's 3.45 p.m. and I'm just about to go outside and shovel more snow, but let me show you what is going on here. So if I open the door, look at this. Look at the snow, look. It's higher than the door, so I am so happy that I already shoveled some about about six hours ago, maybe seven hours ago, I went outside and I took care of a bunch of snow. And if I did not do that, the snow would be, at that time it was probably like six inches. It would be six inches above what it is now. I don't think I'd even be able to get the door open. Look at this, there's icicles on the door. Look at what's going on here. I just started shoveling. Can you see how much snow that is? That's like a foot of snow on top of like five inches from before. So we're probably at like 15 or 16 inches of snow. Look at the cat shelter. Look at the snow on top of the cat shelter. I'm gonna have to dig a path through there. Thankfully Hydrox is under the house. This is what the automatic feeder looks like. I'm really happy that I cleaned it off when I did before because that's a lot now. It would have been a lot worse. This is what Hydrox's shelter looks like. And if it was not under the house, he would literally be snowed in. So I hope Ditto is okay wherever Ditto stays. I have to dig out that front door and I'll dig out the window. 
this is what the shelter looks like after it's been shoveled out and I did take the shelter out and I put two new potty pads in there because yeah he did pee in there so I hope he doesn't pee in there again there he is he's on the other side of that rubbermaid tub I don't know if you could see him but he's gonna hang out there until uh, until I kind of leave the area then he'll probably go back in the shelter and here is the automatic feeder I'm gonna finish it later I have to go uh, take care of some other things uh, some other parts of the yard but at least there's a path up to it this is the view from inside of the garage I just opened the garage door there's a snow blower and there's the snow it is now a little bit after 9 p.m. and this is what the patio looks like. Everything has just been shoveled and snow blown uh, within the past half hour or so. The, uh, this shelter, the doghouse shelter, is pretty much buried. Um, the piles of snow are higher than the shelter. And this is what the automatic feeder looks like. It's a very similar situation here where the snow is starting to accumulate to a point where it's almost as tall as the top of the roof on this shelter. I mean, it's definitely as tall as the bottom of the roof on this shelter. Um, so I've been kind of making sure there's access from the front, there's dry food in it, and there's, there's water in the, in the heated bowls. And there's Hydrox's shelter. Once again, the snow had piled up near that front door uh, to the point where it was almost blocked. But Hydrox is in it right now, and he's on the live stream right now. Um, but it's nice and cleared out. And there's also these little walking paths for cats. Um, I don't know where Ditto is. I haven't seen him. Um, so these paths have been shoveled out. And I know the lighting is very weird. Um, so... It goes through here, and actually, um, I have seen some cat tracks in this before it was just shoveled out again. So it goes to the bottom uh, of the house where the other shelter is, and then it goes all along the side of the house. It's pretty big, and then there's another one in the front yard. I mean, this is horrible. This is, this is just absolutely horrible. This is definitely the worst storm that I have experienced while I've been living in this house. This is one of the worst storms um, I've ever experienced. It's just a lot of snow. And it wasn't bad when it was the soft snow that's really light and easy to shovel and move. But now it's getting wetter and it's getting heavier and it's just much worse. That is what the patio table looks like. It is just covered. And this is what the greenhouse looks like. It's half buried. Uh, but those Christmas lights inside are doing a pretty good job of keeping it warmer inside. So it's about 18 degrees out, but it's about, I would say it's about 35 to 40 in the greenhouse, which is why it's not accumulating any snow on top of it or anything. Uh, anything that was on it is just kind of melting off. Um, the last time I opened it, the Meyer lemon tree was still alive and some geraniums were still alive. But after this, I don't know. I don't know if they're going to survive this. It's 11.42 a.m. and there's Hydrox. Do you see him? He's toward the right. He's under the house. And he's sitting next to the Rubbermaid tub. So he was hanging out in a shelter all morning. And I've been out here clearing some areas for him. So I thought I'd give you a tour. Thankfully, the weather has warmed up a little bit today and the snow is starting to melt. And the faster it melts, the happier I will be. So here's his shelter. The area under the house stays clear, so I don't even have to uh, shovel it out. It just stays clear. Uh, but everything here, everything here in front of the shelter, I had to clean out. So he has a nice path. And then here is the <laughs> Here's the automatic feral cat feeder. Um, so there's a whole bunch of dry food because it's dispensing. I've never seen so much dry food in that bowl. See all the dry food? So all the, uh, all the wildlife is kind of hibernating right now and I don't know if there are any other cats that have been around. Um, because it's really hard for cats to get around in the snow. The snow is taller than the cats, but, uh, there's heated water bowls underneath so there's water if anyone wants it and there is dry food. And then here are the paths that I cleaned out yesterday and I cleaned them out again today and 
there's over two feet of snow on both sides of this path. So if I did not clean out this path, I don't know how cats would walk around because um, the snow is thick and it's not um, firm enough that they could walk on top of it. They would kind of fall down into it. Um, so you can see it's starting to melt in the bottom already and I have to be careful because there are extension cords around. And then here's the path on the side of the house. Hydrox has walked down this path. I'm just going to walk down it now to kind of um, um, compress the snow under my feet. And then here's the path that continues in the, in the front yard and I walked that path before and I kind of compressed it as much as possible. And um, yeah, so the cats usually uh, run under that big, it's like a big tree over there. That's where they go. This is a very narrow path, but it's plenty wide for cats. Here's the back step. This has all been cleared off and it's starting to melt, which is good. And then this is what we have over here. Giant mountains of snow. So this morning, Hydrox was actually in this path and I, I just cleared it. He got to it before I cleared it. Um, so he was, Hydrox was like right here and he was trying to kind of get up onto this giant pile of snow because I guess he wanted to go around here. He likes to go around here. I don't know if he, this is his bathroom area if he digs in the dirt around here. I've seen him around here a few times. He likes to hang out here in the sun and he was looking to go in this area. So what I had to do was I had to then clear this. I had to make a path in here and I made a path down here kind of through some some shrubs. So he can go here if he wants to. This is all cleared out. If anyone wants to use that shelter, it's all cleared out. And then this is cleared out under here. And there's like a little bench behind these solar panels and Ditto likes to hang out under there. So that's all cleared out too in case Ditto shows up and he just wants to hang out there. I thought I would show you these two shovels. So the shovel on the right is just a regular snow shovel. And then the shovel on the left is actually like an emergency shovel that you keep in your car. It comes apart and it folds up. So that's what it looks like. Um, the handle comes apart and it all, it all folds up. And I used to have this in my car when I lived in New York City because I used to live on the Upper West Side and I would keep a car and I would park the car in the street. And if it snowed, I'd have to dig the car out. So I kept this in the car and it's, it's a good size to dig a car out. And it's the perfect size to make little paths for the cats um, because it's not really wide. And um, you know, it just saves you a lot of back breaking work um, because it's a lightweight shovel and it's also metal. What I've learned is that when you use a metal shovel, the metal stays cold and the snow does not stick to it. Because when I use the other shovel, which is plastic, a lot of the times you'll be shoveling and the snow just sticks to the shovel and it makes every scoop just so much heavier. And I didn't have the problem with this one and, and it's because it's metal. So these emergency shovels are really good to have. If I find one on Amazon, I'll put a link to it in the description below this video. Another helpful tip when buying snow shovels, always buy a snow shovel with a metal edge. See the edge in the shovel? It is all metal. And the reason why you want to do that is because when you use the shovel, the shovel does not wear away. So soon after I moved into this house, we had a really, really bad winter, like really bad. And I don't know if it was February or March, but it was just nonstop snow all winter. And what happened was you could not buy a shovel anywhere because, you know, the stores are always ahead of the seasons and everyone needed to buy shovels uh, and you couldn't buy them anywhere. And the reason why everyone needed to buy shovels was everyone's shovels were wearing out from shoveling too much snow. So what happened was you'd have a plastic shovel and then the whole edge of the shovel would just be worn away. And it would be like, I definitely need to get a new shovel. So ever since then, the only time I get shovels is um, when it has a metal edge because you know, the shovel will last even with the metal edge. I don't know if you could see this, but the whole, the whole middle is kind of like scooped out already where the metal is starting to wear away, but it's going to last a whole lot longer than just a regular plastic shovel. The other thing that was going on at that time was people were stealing shovels. I remember that. It was like if you had a shovel, you had to take it inside and guard it 
at that time, a lot of people would just leave their shovels out by the door, but not anymore because literally people were stealing shovels because there was a shovel shortage. It's 8, 11 p.m. and look who's here, it's Ditto. I have no idea where he has been. His paws are all muddy. He looks wet, but everything's wet outside. I don't know where he's been sheltering, but I just opened the back door a few minutes ago and Hydrox jumped onto the step and he was looking, so I put some food together for him and I'll put another plate together for Ditto. Yay, Ditto, you made it. Where were you? Ditto, where have you been hanging out? Where have you been hanging out, Ditto? I just put another plate of food outside for Ditto. He's very hungry. And Hydrox is too. If Hydrox eats all the food and Ditto finishes everything, then I'll, I'll give them some more. I just put some more food on Hydrox's plate and Ditto is still finishing what's on his plate. And when I went out there, Ditto headbutted my hand and started rubbing all up against my leg. So Ditto's very happy to have some food. And that's what the automatic feeder looks like right now. So what happened today was that uh, we had a little bit more flurries and then we had some frozen rain and it made all of the snow uh, more compact and heavy and hard and I had to do some shoveling uh, on the driveway to clear out my car and stuff. It was just, it was miserable, so. I'm glad Ditto was able to get out from wherever he was sheltering. Ditto's been hanging out by the back door, so I thought I would see if he wants to come in. Look at this. Is he going to come in? He's been looking so sad and lonely just sitting here like staring at me through the door. Literally staring at me. Look at this. Like obviously he's going to smell the other cats. I don't think it's a good idea for to bring him in because like I really haven't petted him yet or picked him up and I mean he could come in and it could be a situation where I won't be able to get him back out um, so all the cats are upstairs and I shut the kitchen door and he can use the other shelter I just think he doesn't know how to do it let me go out and see if I could show him the other shelter it's 9.09 p.m. and I don't know what you can see, but Ditto just walked into the shelter. I don't know if he's still in the shelter, but he was in the shelter before I went to the other room to get the camera. So what I did was I put some catnip in the shelter, and then I put a trail of catnip uh, down this path to the shelter. There's like a shoveled path to the shelter. And the next thing I knew when I looked out the window, Ditto was standing right in front of the shelter. And then he went in the shelter. So I'm hoping he's still in it. I'm hoping he went in and he realizes it's warm and comfortable and he can stay in there. Thank you for watching this Lucky Farrell's video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you'd like me to post more videos. And please make sure to check out these other videos that were selected especially for you.